This is Motoring Today, the Philippines' premier and longest-running weekly motoring news and features TV and online magazine. I'm Ray Louis Gamboa. And I'm Susie Gamboa. Here are this week's features to watch out for. On Motoring Forum, we shall discuss the significance of the LRT's fare increase, our road safety reminder of the Young Street Smart Sports and Centers and the right-of-way rules for turning vehicles. This week's Mind Super shall be about the illegal use of mobile phones while driving. All these plus the latest news in transportation and traffic management, as well as developments in the automotive industry, are on this week's edition of Motoring Today. Join us! Welcome back to Motoring Today. Here now are the latest news and developments in the country's transportation and traffic management. EDSA busway riders will no longer have free rides to look forward to. The Libring Sakai program may no longer be pushed through this year despite earlier promises from transportation authorities. Newspaper reports said the free rides on the Edsel busway may no longer be resumed despite the allotment of 1.3 billion pesos for the program in the 2023 national budget. The reports quoted Land Transportation, Franchising, and Regulatory Board Chairman Teofilo Guadis III as saying that the Department of Transportation is eyeing to use the allotment for the Libring Sakai program to provide passengers discounts on jeepneys and shuttles aside from buses. The LTFRB is now awaiting instruction from the DOTR which Guadis said intends to stretch the money and discount program to include jeepneys, shuttle rides, and buses. The LTFRB estimated that continuing the Libring Sakai program would use up the 1.3 billion pesos in just four months and would mostly benefit bus passengers on the EDSA route. While regular EDSA busway riders won't be happy about this development, other commuters will surely welcome having to pay less for riding jeepneys, shuttles, and buses on routes that were not part of the Libring Sakai program. Meanwhile, it appears that San Miguel Corporation will soon be adding a new expressway to its already extensive tollway network. The deadline is coming on without anyone submitting a challenge to the unsolicited proposal of San Miguel Holdings Corp for 27-kilometer Cavite Batangas Tollway. This was announced by the Cavite Provincial Government, which had earlier approved the unsolicited proposal from the SMC for a 27 billion peso Cavite Batangas Expressway project. The CBEX was necessarily open to a Swiss challenge with a January 24 deadline set for submission of counter proposals from other interested parties. The CBEX will traverse the municipalities of Silang, Amadeo, Tagaytay, Indang, Mendez, and Alfonso and Cavite up to Nasugbo in Matangas. As proposed, the CBEX will be a joint venture project with the Cavite Provincial Government with SMC to finance, design, construct, operate the tollway under a 35-year concessional period. A new tollway should make motoring between Cavite and Batangas a lot more quicker and convenient but at some cost. Continuing, the plan to improve walkways and bicycle lanes in Metro Manila should spark new debates on priorities. 
The Metropolitan Manila Development Authority has approved its Active Transport Infrastructure Improvement Program. The ATIIP calls for widening of pedestrian walkways and protected bidirectional bike lanes. According to the Department of Transportation press statement, a dry run of how the ATIIP will be implemented is already underway. The DOTR said it is working with the Department of Public Works and Highways to enhance the overall active transport infrastructure along EDSA, particularly in Santolan, Ortigas, and Shaw. The ATIIP dovetails with the Philippine Development Plan for 2023 to 2028, approved by President Bombo Marcos, that among other things mandates giving pedestrians and cyclists the highest priority in the hierarchy of road users. The national government believes that the only way traffic congestion will be solved along EDSA and all other metropolitan areas in the country is through building better and more active transport and mass transportation systems. Cycling advocates should pray that the ATIIP will finally see proper bike and pedestrian lanes established in major urban centers nationwide. And finally, will using handheld devices for ticketing violations improve enforcement of traffic rules and regulations? That question is now being asked after this new development. Members of the Land Transportation Office Law Enforcement Unit should now be using a new handle device to issue electronic temporary operator's permits. These devices can print out the ETOPs issued to those caught violating traffic regulations. Earlier, the LTO revealed that its personnel have been training on the use of the handheld devices. The initiative is said to be part of the LTO's effort to achieve full digitization of operations and processes. The LTO said the devices will be used initially to issue tickets or ETOPs, but there are plans to use these for accepting payments of fines for traffic violations. Another question that will soon be asked is how or will the use of handheld digital devices for issuing ETOPs or tickets affect the plan for a single ticketing system in Metro Manila? And those are the latest news and developments in transportation and traffic management. Coming up next is Mooring Forum, brought to you by Suzuki Philippines. The petition for a fare increase on LRT 1 and 2 has already been approved by the Light Rail Transit Authority. But public hearings must still be held on the fare increase. Motoring Forum discusses why the public consultation on the already approved fare increase still needs to be done and related issues. It appears that an increase in fare for rides on lines 1 and 2 of the light rail transit will have to wait. While the Light Rail Transit Authority has approved petitions for a fair increase in LRT1 and LRT2, these would have to go through another approval process with the Rail Regulatory Unit of the Department of Transportation. LRT Administrator Hernando Cabrera and the three members of the LRT Board approve adjusting the boarding fare of LRT1 and LRT2 by 2.29 pesos plus 0.21 pesos per kilometer for the distance fare. The boarding fare for both lines has been pegged at 11 pesos and the distance fare at 1 pesos per kilometer since 2015. It must be mentioned that the LRT Board of Directors is composed of nine members representing the DOTR, the Land Transportation Franchising and Regulatory Board, the Department of Finance, the Department of Budget and Management, the National Economic Development Authority, the Department of Public Works and Highways, the Metropolitan Manila Development Authority, plus two appointed ones, LRT Administrator Cabrera and Attorney Dimapuno Datu. Many expected that with the approval by the LRT Administrator and three members of the board, the new fare adjustment would soon be implemented. It now appears that more steps are needed, including public hearings. A notice of public hearing on the rate hike petition was issued by Cesar Chavez, the RTR Undersecretary and Rail Regulatory Unit Chairman, setting the date for February 17. The notice invited interested parties to attend the hearing to give and discuss their petitions and comments on the fair adjustment. Interested parties are also advised to confirm their attendance and participation and are encouraged to give their comments through a concise petition paper submitted to the Office of the Undersecretary for Railways of the DOTR. This is the first fair adjustment that appears to be close to getting final approval and to be implemented since 2015. It must be noted that under the concession agreement, the LRT1 and LRT2 operators can seek fair adjustment every two years. The LRT apparently acted on the petition for fair adjustment filed by the Light Rail Manila Corp. operator of LRT1 back in April 2022 that sought an increase in the current base fare to 16 pesos.46 and 1.5 pesos per kilometer. However, the LRMC also has pending fare petitions filed in 2016, 2018, and 2020. 
There is yet no official word on when the DOTR and the RRU expect to complete the public hearings, approve a final fare rate adjustment, and implement it. However, LRT Administrator Castro said that once the fare adjustment is finally granted, expire fare adjustments for the MRT3. Commuters really should brace themselves for an increase in fare on the light rail transits. That appears to be inevitable. What is not inevitable is the continuing improvement of commuter train facilities and operations. Commuters should continue to demand for better services. That's our Morning Forum this week, courtesy of Suzuki Philippines. here on Motoring Today, and we now have this week's important motoring tips, starting off with some road safety reminders from Toyota Motor Philippines. If you are stopped at an intersection, paunahin ang sakyan na nasa kanan dahil ito ay may right of way. It is important to keep this in mind for smooth travel. Continuing with this week's edition of Motoring Today, let's now focus on proper driver's demeanor, especially for those driving PUVs. Here's Pai Chaper this week. Bayong Chaper lang kaibigan. Ako si Marlon, isang kapa nyo Chaper habang nagmamaneho. Kailangan buo ang atensyon. Mo atende gulo gulo. Ang cellphone ay isa ng malaking bahagi sa buhay ng tao. Halos lahat ay meron at gumagamit nito. Pero sana kapag tayo ay nagmamaneho, tigilin muna natin ang paggamit ng cellphone. Paalala lang, sa pagmamaneho, kailangan ng iba yung konsentrasyon. Kapag ikaw ay nagtetelepono, ang isip mo ay wala sa iyong pagmamaneho. At ito ang maaaring maging rason para magkaroon ng aksidente. Kung ayaw mong mamultahan o maaksidente, huwag kang gumamit ng cellphone habang nagmamaneho. Si Marlon Gudmalin, payong super lang kaibigan mula sa isang kapa niyo, super. Our Car of the Week is next on Showcase, courtesy of Prudential Guarantee. Suzuki Philippines has rolled out the all-new Celerio GL, confident that it will find owners looking for a fun yet practical hatchback. Suzuki describes the latest generation Celerio as a compact hatch with a spacious interior. But at 3,695 millimeters long, 
1,655 mm wide and 1,555 mm tall, the Celerio is still properly a subcompact hatchback, although looking a lot larger than its predecessor. Suzuki has decided to eschew the boxy design of the old Celerio, giving the new one well-rounded corners and surfaces. A minimum ground clearance of 170mm and 2,435mm long wheelbase that pushes the tires to the very corners give the Celerio an SUV vibe. The Celerio fascia has a retro look with a black oval grille and a single band of chrome flanking the Suzuki badge and leading to the distinctive multi-reflector halogen headlamps. The body color bumper frames a black lower grille which in turn frames round fog lamps at the corners. The rear also features distinctive LED combination lamps and reflectors on the bumper. The 15-inch black alloy wheels also look distinctive wrapped by 175-60R15 tires. Other exterior features include two-speed intermittent front wipers with washer, rear one-speed wipers with washer, rear window knee mister, body-colored outside mirrors that power just antenna mounted on front roof. Like its predecessor, the all-new Celerio GL has a surprisingly roomy interior that can seat five adults, with 295 liters of space for cargo in the rear. More with the rear seats folded, it folds 60-40. No smart entry system, but it does have remote-controlled door locks with hazard lamp, central door locking with the switches on the center console, and power windows in front and rear. It also comes with manual air conditioning system complemented by a pollen filter. The rotary controls for the air conditioning are on the center console with an easy reach of driver and front seat passenger. Suzuki describes the interior design as energetic, bringing one's senses alive. The description fits within an interior featuring a lot of lines, angles, curves, and circles. It's got a large analog speedometer and a small digital tachometer. The front passenger and driver seats manually adjust four ways. The fabric seat upholstery looks and feels rich. Three spoke steering wheel tilts and comes with controls for the audio system. There is a front console tray that comes with drink holder. The front and rear doors also got drink holders. The all new Celera GL comes with a 6.2 inch touchscreen audio unit with an anti glare touchscreen, Webling 2.0, Bluetooth, and USB connectivity in place through speakers on the front and rear doors. There is also a 12 volt accessory socket on the front console underneath the aircon controls. Lift the hood of the all new Celeri GL and one finds the 1.0 liter K10C dual jet engine that generates 67 horsepower and 89 Nm of torque. While the power numbers may not seem impressive, the engine provides enough grunt to make the Celeri a fun drive, considering it only has a curb weight of 805 to 830 kg or a gross vehicle weight of 1260 kg. Suzuki claims the all-new Celeri achieved a 28.25 km per liter fuel efficiency, a claim validated by the Automobile Association of the Philippines. This makes the Celeri, which is offered with either a 5-speed manual transmission or an auto gear shift system, all the more attractive to motorists looking to save on fuel costs. The AGS is an automated manual transmission featuring intelligent shift control actuator that automatically operates the shift and clutch to bring convenience to manual driving. Think of the AGS as an automatic gearbox with the fuel efficiency of powertrains with manual transmission. The Celeri features Suzuki hardtech platform that both light and highly rigid which makes the subcompact hatchback a fun, safe, and an economical daily driver. The suspension system uses McPherson struts in front and torsion beam in the rear. The Celeri brake system features ventilated discs in front and leading trailing jumps in the rear. Ride and handling is helped along by electric power steering. The all-new Celeri that arrived in the country comes standard with anti-lock brake system and electronic stability program. The Celeri with AGS comes with an added hill hold control. The Celeri with AGS also comes with what Suzuki calls the Engine Auto Stop Start or EASS system that on certain conditions shuts down the engine automatically like when coming to a stop. Suzuki says this should help prevent unnecessary fuel consumption while limiting exhaust emissions. Other standard safety features include 3-point ELR seat belts or 4 plus a center lap belt in the rear seat, Isofix child seat anchorages, child seat tethers, child-proof rear door locks, dual front airbags, rear parking sensors, and immobilizer.
Welcome back to Motoring Today. The auto industry now takes center stage. Suzuki Philippines invited members of the media to test drive the new Suzuki Ortiga Hybrid. The whole day affair gave participants a chance to experience the driving comfort with a mild hybrid powertrain. The new Ortiga Hybrid test drive took participants from Makati to the Suzuki dealership in Cavite and then to the Lotus Spa Resort in Laguna. We drove 12 of our Ortiga Hybrid vehicles heading here in Lotus Spa, this very nice uh, place, for about 84 kilometers. Of course, the participants were our motoring media who are actually influencers. And uh, we wanted to make sure that, uh, you know, we provide this experience for them to talk about the product, to give feedback uh, that our customers would hopefully be hearing out later on. The choice of venue for the test drive and eco-amazing race that participants later enjoyed was dictated by Suzuki wanting to show how the Ortiga can be both a fun, practical, and eco-friendly vehicle. As you can see, the place, uh, fresh air, green background of course which actually relates to our um, goal of uh, communicating that the Ortiga Hybrid is ready to bring our market the most fuel efficient and to enjoy you know, driving with less carbon emission. Pretty much offering of the Ortiga Hybrid. So that's why we brought all our partners. The new Suzuki Ortiga Hybrid is now available for order and test drives at all Suzuki dealerships nationwide. To our customers, I'm Norishide Takei. I would like to invite all of you to visit uh, any of our 70 dealerships nationwide. We have prepared the test drive unit for all of you to see and drive. Mini is looking to grow its share of the local vehicle market with the introduction of electric vehicles. This was revealed by Kid Yam, head of Mini Asia, who is here to help celebrate the opening of the Mini Showroom in Bonifacio Global City. So Mini has been uh, growing quite uh, strongly in, uh, in the Philippines. And of course, one of the uh, key growth plan for Mini in the Philippines is the introduction of our electric vehicles. Globally, Mini has announced the plan that uh, Mini will be transformed into a full electric brand by 2030, which is seven years from today. So of course, this journey will include Mini Philippines as well. And uh, we look forward to the introduction of more exciting models in the Philippines. The opening of the BGC showroom is part of Mini Philippines becoming a more aggressive and growing its share of the market. Mini Philippines is also excited about rolling out Mini EVs locally. We're back in BGC and uh, where most of our clients are, are, are nearby. And uh, we're excited to be back here and, and we'll be very, very aggressive with MINI starting this year onwards. By 2030, all the MINI models will be electric vehicles already. So we will start it by next year. Hopefully next year we can start uh, introducing one model at a time. And uh, we're very excited about it. Uh, I've seen the prototype, it's beautiful. And we're all excited to supply the electric MINI here in the Philippines. Nisa Philippines is looking forward to a growing local automotive market in 2023 and plans to further grow along with it. We are already growing, the economy is booming, and we will continue in that way. We have confidence that the people want to go out, the people want to drive, they want to go to beaches. We hope also have a very good partnership with the Department of Tourism. Philippines is a lovely country, and what about not going with your car and driving around the Philippines with your family? And I think that's what you can do with all our products. Nissan in 2023 will be focusing on meeting the high demand for the highly in-demand models in its lineup, including the Kicks ePower and the Levina. We recently launched Kicks and Levina. Okay, we still have been uh, trying to serve the high demand of those products. I think what we are focused this year is to serve that demand and it stop having a list of people waiting. We want to be serving our customers quicker and this is our main effort is to try to reduce the time. Hoyos also revealed that Nissan will soon announce a reduction in the sticker price of the Leaf. He said the price reduction for the Leaf has been possible by a newly released Malacania executive order temporarily modifying tire freights on import electric vehicles. That's the
the week that was in motoring. Thank you for joining us. Please don't forget to check us out on social media. Until next week here on Motoring Today, now on its 36th year of continuing service to the general motoring public with a life now commitment to promote road safety. On behalf of our dad, Butch Gamboa, I'm Ray Louis Gamboa. And I'm Susie Gamboa. Happy motoring! motoring.